that we look at the meaning of this word glory and it's also, it also means a state of splendor, magnificence, prosperity, a state of absolute hap happiness, gratification, contentment, supreme greatness or authority or sovereignty. These are meanings of the word glory. And in the book of Psalm, we see a very interesting scripture. Here's what it says. It says, when I consider the heavens, so the psalmist was looking up into the sky, and he was seeing that picture that I saw, not in, in color the way we see it there, but he was seeing a black and white picture. And he said, when I consider the heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have, have ordained. He, then he asked a question. He said, what is mine? He said, man, when I think about all of these things, when I think about your weight, when I think about your glory, who are we? And how did we get into this picture? And how come we could have a place of importance? So he said, what is man that you are mindful of him? He's, he's saying, man, the world is so expansive. You are so weighty. You are so full. How could you even stop to think about us? He says, what is man that you are mindful of him? And as he begins to ask that question, he answers his own questions. He says, And the Son of Man that you would visit him, for you have made him a little lower the angels, and you have crowned him with glory and honor. The thing that God is saying to us is that glory is our destiny. We are born with glory, and we are born for glory. Touch the person next, next to you and say, you are born for glory. What this means is that he bestowed the distinct opportunity for us to be in his category. That's what God is saying. He's saying, look, when, when the psalmist says, why are you mindful of man? What God was saying is, I am so mindful of you that I give you the opportunity to be in my category, to have my attributes. Somebody say amen. amen. The word glory is important to God, but the question I have for you today is, is the word glory important to you? Because you know, a lot of people, we say glory all the time, but we don't understand the true nature of the word. And so because we don't understand the true nature of the word, the word glory isn't important to us. But after today, I want the word glory to be important to you. And let me show you why it's important. If you knew what this word was really all about, it would change your life. It would change the way you think. If you understood what it means to be a part of his glory. As I said before, you are destined for glory. In 1 Corinthians chapter 2, it says this. It says, No, we speak of God's secret wisdom, a wisdom that has been hidden, and that God destined for glory. Everybody say, destined for glory. Say, I am destined for glory. It says, destined for glory before time began. None of the rulers of this age, if they understood it, for if they understood it, they would not have crucified the Lord of what? So this word glory is an important word. I don't know how many of you are beginning to latch on to the importance of this word glory so far. Are you getting it? So it says, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. So God kept reminding us throughout the scriptures of the importance of the word glory. Now, when I realized how often God talked about glory, I began to realize why he talked about glory. The verse goes on to say, it says, however... As it is written, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived what God has prepared for those who love him. So this scripture is telling us that, let me tell you something. If you get entwined into the glory of God, there's no limit on what he has for you. God has some things for us. But in order for us to really appreciate it, we have to get into the glory. And I'm going to show you today how to get into the glory. Because I am a part of the glory and I'm increasing in my glorification. 
I'm increasing in my revelation of God's glory in the earth. You see, the glory has been on me for a long time because I got hooked up to the source. And the more the glory has been on me, the more the glory has been revealed. And the more it's revealed, the more people are impacted. When I think of the many people over the years who shared the word, when they have shared the word, when, and you see, God does not give glory to anything that is not authentic. So if you speak his real word, then he backs it up. But if you speak your words, that doesn't carry any weight. Your words have very little weight. Because there's no substance behind you. Because the Bible says, in him we live and move and have our being. So whatever you do outside of him is wordless. So if you want your words to have weight, you have to get with the weighty one. Glory also means to give credit. Now, what, what does that mean? And, and I, I need my buy in a second. You know, we sing a song sometimes. It says, I was worth saving. Let me tell you why that's important. A part of the song says, you thought I was worth saving. And it says, glory to the one who saved my life. In other words, let me give credit back to where my salvation came from. Let me get that. Let's get a little portion of that. The, the, the band is going to help me today. I need a little help this morning. Amen? Y'all appreciate a little help from the worship team? This is a worship conference. I want, you to, I want us to sing this song together because there, 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 there's something in this song that's important. You thought I was worth saving. You thought I was worth saving. considered me so important that you thought I was worth saving. And then it says, glory to the one who saved my life. In other words, let me give credit back to the one who saved me. And I want to tell you something today. I give glory back to God because it was only him who saved my life. You see, with, 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 without the glory of God, I couldn't receive the glory. And because I received the glory for him, I have to give the glory back to him. Somebody say glory. glory. Say hallelujah. hallelujah. Let me tell you something else about glory. Glory means consistency. Now, what is consistency? Consistency means that you function consistent with your purpose, your design, and your function. God is the most consistent thing or person in the universe. You see, God is so consistent that he has character. And what is character? Character means the essence of your being, the things that don't change. 
And so when we glorify God, it means we become consistent. We live with character. We don't say one thing and do another. Because you see, God is integrated. His word and his behavior are the same. And that's how he expects us to be. And we glorify him when we are consistent. The Bible says we are destined for glory. But many of us will not get there because we don't understand who we really are. And we don't understand who he is. When you understand who you really are, your behavior changes. I want to give you some keys to revealing God's glory. I want to give you some keys to, to revealing God's glory. Number one, function according to design and purpose. Let me tell you something. One of the ways that you glorify God is you work the way he designed you to work. You know, if you have a product, let's say you, you manufactured a car, and somebody takes the car, and it was designed to drive forward at 100 miles an hour. When that car is driving at its designated limit, it's giving glory to the manufacturer. But if I take that same vehicle and I put it in reverse and I ride it through the bush, I have destroyed the glory of the vehicle. That's why a man shouldn't try to be a woman. Because, you see, glory comes out of you functioning according to your design. Another meaning of the word glory is reflection. So when you live according to the glory of God, you reflect Him. The Bible says we were made in His image and likeness. Glory also means mirror image. So when people see you, they should see God. You know what Jesus said? Let me tell you, let me show you, let me tell you how, how, how relevant this is to us. You know what Jesus said when people talked to him? Jesus said, you know what? If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. In other words, I am a reflection of him. If you look in the mirror, you will see him. And you see, that's the way we are designed. We, the Bible says we were made in his image and his likeness, so we are supposed to be a reflection of him. When you understand who you are, then you start reflecting him. But when you don't understand who you are, you live outside of your purpose. And you become what we call a poor image. You see, we are supposed to be transformed into his image so that when people see us, they say, man, you look like God. And then they don't even know what, look, what God looks like, but they say, man, you know, you look like God. You know, there were stories in the Bible. You, you remember, I don't know if you remember with, with uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar said, you know, uh, I, put, I put three guys in there. I said, I fought one. I must be the son of God. Because something, something is different about him. And you see, that's what people should be saying about you. People should be saying, man, look here. When I, when I see you, I see something that is not an ordinary man. Because I see a reflection of God in you. I see the image of God. So we are made in the image of God. We are made in the image of G-O-D. And the world is trying to remake us in the image of D-O-G. You know, when I look at some of the pictures from a recent parade that we had here in Nassau, I looked at it and I said, you know, now, is this a good reflection of God? Is this the image of G-O-D or is this, is this the image of D-O-G? I said, man, this look like dog stuff to me. This don't look like God stuff. And you see, you don't want to take on the image of D-O-G. You want to take on the image of G-O-D. Are you with me? So we were not made in the image of D-O-G. Glory means functioning according to purpose. When you are glorifying God, you are functioning the way you are supposed to function. We re reveal God's glory when we function how we're supposed to focus. How we function how we're supposed to function. Now, let me give you an example. The glory of a bird is revealed in flight. You see, when you see a, an eagle in the air, that's glory. You know why? That's the way it is designed to be. If you see an eagle walking on the ground or trying to swim, 
That doesn't give God glory because that's not what God designed him for. God said, look, man, fly. So whatever God gave you to do, you glorify him by expressing it to the fullest. If you express it in a limited amount, it means that you are limiting the glory of God. That's why every talent, every gift, and every ability that you have is supposed to be developed because God expects us to glorify him by the way we act and live. Are you with me? If you're with me, say hallelujah. I was at a church the other day, and uh, the preacher, he started walking, in and walking through the crowd, and he started looking under the seats, and he said, man, they asked him, they said, they said what are you looking for? He said, man, I'm looking to see if I can find amen in this church. <laughs> So I, I'm not going to walk down there so you all could give me a little help. Amen? So the glory of the bird is revealed in flight. And the glory of man is revealed in how he reflects God, how he lives. And you know what? I realize that I've risen on the level of glory. I've risen on the level of glory because I have become a better reflection of God. I'm not a perfect reflection. And none of us are a perfect reflection, but we can rise on our level. And you see, your, your, your journey every day, your mission every day is to keep rising. You know why? Because there are all kinds of things that you can't control in the world, but you can control your action. You can control your words. Amen. When you don't reveal his glory, here's the deal now. now Y'all got to hold on to your seat for some of this stuff. This is weighty stuff. When you don't reveal his glory, you are worth less. Because he is worthy. He is all worth, and we are some worth. The closer we get to him, the more worth we have. The farther away we move from him, the more worthless we become. In the Bahamas, we see the, 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 the former prime minister never used to say worthless, he said worthless. So you become worthless. And you know, we hear that terminology and we don't realize how that relates to what God says about us. You see, he is worthy. And so when you start revealing his image and when you start reflect reflecting his image, your worth goes up. Your value goes up. Worth is associated with the value. Do you realize that you become more important when you start looking like God? Your value increases. Let me tell you something. My value has increased in my life. I, my value has gone up so high. You know, there was a time when I didn't, I, I didn't reflect God at all. I reflect the image of DOG. Lying, teething, cheating, so on and so forth. And, and, and I, I, was, I was actually giving a bad reputation to the one who made me. Because here it is, he made me to be who I am today, and I was going in another direction. And you see, when you follow things that don't have worth, then you become worthless. That's why God said, do not follow idols. Because you see, idols don't have value. Idols mimic the real God. So they make an image to look like God, but it doesn't have any substance. It don't carry no weight. And because it doesn't carry no weight, it doesn't have any worth. And because it doesn't have any worth, it becomes worthless. And when you start worshiping worthless things, then you become worthless. You, your value is worthless. Worth is a neutral term. You can become more or less worth by your actions. So how you live influences your worth. Your worth is tied to your image. The closer you are to God, the more your worth is increased. Give me some music. Your worth is tied to your image, the closer you are to God, the more your worth or your value is increased. So I want you to know today that your worth is more in the kingdom. Let me tell you something. You are more valuable when you are hooked up with the kingdom of God because outside of the kingdom of God, all of the things in this world together can't even begin to count in value compared to the word of God and to the kingdom of God. You see, the kingdom of God has all the value. Anything of value in this world comes from God. And even the people who take things and produce value who are not associated with God, it still came from God because it's God who produced it. 
The people who use God's things for their own purposes, they don't even realize that's still not theirs. You can, they can't take any claim to it. It still come from God. So those of us who are a part of the kingdom, we need to embrace who we are and to start living according to our function so that our value goes up and we are able to access the things in the world. So you are worth more in the kingdom. Amen? Number two, we have to give credit. Glory means to give credit. And one of the ways that you give credit is through worship. You see, when you come on a Sunday, well, I actually, let me rewind that a bit because sometimes we think it's worship, Sunday is worship day. Let me tell you something. Worship day is every day that you have breath. You see, we make statements like this. We say, I'm going to church to worship God. No, 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 no. You got it wrong. You're supposed to say, I've been worshiping God all week, and so I came to connect with some other worshipers. You see, a lot of times when we come to church, we are conjuring up stuff because we don't have worship in us. You see, when we reach in the parking lot, the sound should be in the parking lot. Now, I'm not talking about physical sound. I'm talking about the sound waves of worship. And so when we come in here, Minister Tracy doesn't have to, have, to, have to pump us up to get where we need to be. Because we come in the place already charged up. Somebody say hallelujah. Look under your seat and see if you can find one amen for me today. Can somebody find an amen for me? Now let me tell you something about worship. Let me tell you something about worship. Actually, the same song that we sang earlier, just play that song quietly. The same one. I was worth saving. Just play that. We're not going to sing it. I just want him to play that. I need something to go along with me, with what I think in. So I, 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 that's, my, that's one of my favorite songs. You all already figured that out. I was worth saving. So let me show you something. So you can ask, you, you know, sometimes we, we sing songs like this. And I'm not bashing anybody, right? But we say, you know, we ascribe worship to God or we ascribe things to God. You can't ascribe things to God, you know. Because you can't ascribe credit to God because God is already all credit. There's no debit in God. He's already all credit. So what you do in worship is you acknowledge the credit. So worship is acknowledging you, say, you, you look up and you say, you say, Chief, let me tell you something. I acknowledge. And because I realize how weighty you are and how much you are worth, I just say, yes, King. Yes, King. You know, you hear, you hear the Rasta fellas come around sometimes and they say, yes, King. You know, that's a good thing. And that's something that we need to say. You know why? Because the King is on the inside of us and he is King. And he said he's the king, so we need to make sure that we give credit to the king. Worship is acknowledgement and gratitude. We are thankful. Let me tell you something. I don't know how many of y'all in this place today are thankful, but I'm a thankful individual. I know where I was. I know where I could have been. I know what could have gone wrong in my life. And I know the things that, let me tell you something. I, I, let, me, let me give you all a little testimony. There, there were several times that I was almost dead or in jail. I sat on a corner one day and some guys just came by and they started shooting and I thought it was a firecracker. And I'm sitting on the wall and then I see other guys jumping over the wall and I see the fire from the gun. This was at night. I, I, I'm looking and I see in fire and it's coming at me. And I'm thinking this is a firecracker until I see everybody jumping over. And I jump over the wall. Seven people got shot and I didn't get shot. Let me tell you something. You got to remember what God saved you from. You have to give credit.
There's so many things that God saved me from. I gave a testimony this week, and some, some people, um, you know, some people knew my testimony. Some people didn't know my testimony. But let me tell you something. I, I, I was reminded of another situation. You know, I was reminded of a situation where I got locked up. And my life was in the balance in a, in a sense. Because you see, um, the person who was in front of me, who happened to be a CID officer, had a package. And the person said to me, they said, um, you know, they said, you know, if I charge you with this, with this package right here, you'll never travel outside the Bahamas again. And the person took the package, look at me, took the package, and put it inside the drawer and said, you know what? I can give you another chance. Now, now who you think did that? You see, you got to acknowledge what God did for you. That's a part of worship. Worship is, is acknowledgement and gratitude. God is worthy. He's full of worth. And we go up in value when we connect to him. You know, sometimes people make it sound like, well, you know, you all go into church um, because you all have problems. Let me tell you something. We go into church because we are connecting with somebody who's increasing our value. We're getting ready to go all the way up. You understand what I'm saying? That's why I connect with God. I connect with God because he's taken me all the way up. And you can't get all the way up without the one who is all the way up. You can't get higher than the most high. That's why I like to take a hit of God sometimes. I like to hit it. John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. First John 4, 4. Greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. So God is full of worth. And you know what Jesus said? Jesus said, they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So you see, in order for you to worship, in order for you to worship him effectively, you have to get in the spirit and you have to get in truth. That means you have to connect with God. If you don't connect with God, you can't worship him effectively. Now I, I have a little, a little thing on the screen here and I want you to look at this a minute. These are two cell phones. And I know all of us have cell phones, and cell phones, one of the greatest problems that we have is that the cell phones never could keep power. But let me tell you something about this picture. You see that piece in the middle? That's God. That's God. You see, God is the source of the power. And you see, this is you. You know, it got all kind of beautiful buttons on it, and it got all kind of things that could work right. But if it don't plug into the source, it becomes worthless. And guess what? The more you stay plugged into the source, the, high, the higher the charge goes. And you see, the problem with us is that we don't stay plugged in. And so when you don't stay plugged in, you don't get the charge. And when you don't get the charge, it means that you can become who you were designed to be. You have potential. You are destined for glory. God has all kinds of things built into you. But if you don't hook up and you don't get charged, you see, worship is getting charged. You know, a lot of us, we, we, we come to church and we, don't, we, we come to church and we be in church for two hours and we don't even get a buzz. You know what I mean? I mean, if you're if you, if you somewhere and, and, and the high is available, man, take a hit. Why would you come in an environment where you could get charged and leave with no charge? Take a hit, man. Roll up a big spliff, spiritual spliff. I, I guess I shouldn't use that terminology, but you know, I, that's my background, you know? So, so I, I, like, I like to roll up a few spiritual spliffs every now and then. And to get charged up. And you see, when you get charged up, you know what I like about those batteries on the cell phones? They show you how much you're being charged. So you need to gauge yourself and you need to ask yourself, what, what percentage charge do I have this week? Do I have a 10% charge? Now I want to show you something else. You see, when the thing is fully charged, then it can function. And so you can go out and do whatever you want to do. But we have to connect. If you don't connect with God, let me tell you something, it's a wonderful thing. I, I, you know, the, the problem with a lot of Christians is they don't understand what Jesus said. Jesus said the gospel is good news. So the gospel is a benefit to your life. We act like, you know, you are sentenced to being a Christian. 
You ever heard people say things like this? They said, well, you know, I would like to be a Christian, but I would like to have some fun first. So, I would. so it sounds like being a Christian decommissions you from your real purpose. But the truth of the matter is, when you come into the kingdom of God, it allows you to function as you were designed. You see, I was supposed to be a husband. I was supposed to be a father. I was supposed to be sharing the gospel to, to people around the world. But I wasn't connected, so I wasn't charged up. So I was walking around like one of these, but the power never came on. So nobody ever figured out who I really was. And nobody will figure out who you are until you get charged up. That's why you got to get connected. Somebody say hallelujah. Can I find one more amen? Now I want to show you something that's another example of worship and connection. You see, in this case, we have two sources. Now, what you will notice is that the phone is still being charged up, but the phone is not connected to the source. It's connected to a resource. Now, what is the resource? You see, the source is God, but the resource is somebody who has been connected to God and they have so much charge in them that they can charge other people. And you see, that's who you are. You're supposed to go out into the world and charge people. When people get next to you, they're supposed to get charged up. Back in the days, we used to call it a contact high. You didn't even come to get high, but you, you get in an, an environment and, and there was so much smoke in the area, you, you get a contact high. I, I, I'm, I'm talking some terminology that some of my brothers in here know what I'm talking about. Amen. Anybody know what that terminology means? Praise your honor if you know that. Okay, all right. I got some people. I sure, I know I wasn't the only one in here. I know we got some people come from back in the day. You know what God says? You know what worship is? Worship is rendering unto Caesar what Caesar's and rendering unto God what's God. We worship God because we render what's due to him. He is so magnificent. He is so marvelous. He is so awesome. And because he is all of these things, it's only natural that we give him the credit and we say, yes, king. So worship is mean you just giving back to God what's due to him. Let me tell you something. God doesn't need worship. In fact, he doesn't need anything because his name means all-sufficient one. His name means self-sustaining. So you, you, can't get, you can't give God no power. You can't charge God up. The only thing you can do is receive a charge from him. But you see, you are so happy for the charge that you receive that you give acknowledgement from, from, from the, where the source came. And you see, when you do that, then he gives you some more charge. Because God appreciates the people who return, just like the ten lepers. God, Jesus said, where's the one? Who came back to give credit worship is rendering unto God what is his due worship causes you to focus on the source of your worth that's what worship does it causes you to focus on the source and we have to focus on the source of our value the problem that we have in life is that we have people focusing on everything else except the source of their value the reason I focus on God every day is because that's where my value came from my worth went up my net worth grew I'm not talking about cash net worth. I'm talking about life net worth. Because you see, cash net worth is a, is a trivial thing. God said, man, the birds, and they, weren't about, they, they don't even worry about things. Why are y'all worrying about things? That's why he said, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added unto you. So he said, man, don't, when you're talking about me, don't, let's not talk about things. Because things are an insult to me. So God said, let me, let me tell you something. I'm going to increase your worth so much that things don't matter. Are you with me? Can we find one more? Amen. And you see, let me tell you something. We have to realize how great our God is. You see, a lot of us, we don't have an appreciation. We, we act as if, as if God is, is a bag of french fries. You know, as if Jesus was a sorry dude. Jesus was the hardest in the West, the biggest chest, the greatest of all time. Greater than Michael, Jordan, Shaq, Kobe, LeBron. Anybody who's been great, they are minuscule in comparison to God. 
I want us to sing a little verse of this song, How Great Is Our God. I tell you, I'm, I, want some, I need some help today, so we're going to sing this song, How Great. How Great. Say, sing it with me. It's our God. about how important it is to get charged up because you see we start doing all kinds of things in life pursuing all kinds of things and we forget to charge up when you are fully charged you function better if you don't get a charge from God then it means you haven't got power from the source and if you don't get power from the source then you become wordless you want to increase your value by getting a regular charge is anybody with me this morning can I find one more amen? amen. Now I wanna I, I, I had a I found another picture of a cell phone. And you see, this is this this is what some of us look like. You see, we we we, we go out into the world and, and, and we try to reflect God, but the light is on red. And because the light is on red, we can't even show people what God looks like. We don't have any power to show. So that's why you need to get charged. That's the person next to you and say, you got to get charged up. You see, when you are fully charged, then you can reveal all the features. You know, you know, you know what it is to have a cell phone and you know, you could email, you got the calendar, you got the phone, you got the text, you got the internet, you got all these things that are available to you, but you don't have no charge and you can't use none of it. But you see, when you get charged up, then your business gets better. And people start saying, man, how did you get that, that, that information about business? You say, man, I got charged up, and now I'm showing off the glory of God. You see, your family starts to work better when you get charged up, because when you get charged up, people start to see, man, there's something causing you to work right. Can somebody say amen one more time? And let me tell you something. It doesn't make sense having a bunch of buttons, and you can't use them. And you see, your life is filled with potential. Your life has, God has given you so many buttons. You see those apps on their phone? There are so many apps inside of you. And many of us, we haven't even downloaded the apps yet. I wouldn't talk about using it. And some of us, we downloaded some apps, but we never charge in. So people can never see the glory of God in us. Are you with me? Number three. I'm getting ready to wrap up number three. I don't even know what time it is because the clock went out with the power. But anyway, I, I, I got some time. See, the next thing is, to reveal the glory of God, you have to obey and honor. Now, you know, Jesus made a statement that some of us ignore. Jesus said, man, if you love me, it's, not, it's, it's nice to go around saying that. It's nice to go around singing that. But he said, let me tell you something. I know who loves me and who don't love me. He said, it's easy to figure out who loves me. It's easy to figure out who's going to glorify my name. He said, if you love me, you'll do what I say. And you know, sometimes we look for some complicated methodology to glorify God. God said, all you have to do to glorify me is do what I say. If you love me, you will do what I say. You ever heard this, this they had a commercial the other day, so obey your thirst. No, no, don't obey your thirst, obey your God. Maybe I need to do a t-shirt with that because people are caught up in obeying their thirst. But you need to obey your God because when you obey your God, you glorify Him. And when you glorify Him, the charge is, the charge is so high that it's reflected around you. And you see, if you want to glorify God, keep His commands. You know, you, 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 can, you, can, say, you can say, I love God, and you can give all kinds of testimonies. But if you don't do, if you don't do what He says, 
The Bible says that's like a tinkling cymbal, cymbal or, or sounding brass. You have to do what he says. Now, I know it is not easy to do what he says because we live in an environment that doesn't understand God and doesn't ascribe glory to him. You see, the world tries to give glory to everyone else and everything else other than God. So the world comes up with all kinds of theories. You know, according to the theory, the prognosis theory of the Theophysis of the Aristophilus, um, you know, we have, we, we have deduced that the, 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 the ions of the eons cause these things to come together and this is why we have such and such. Man, let me tell you something. You could cut to all of that and say, man, God did it. If you just give glory to God, then we could get rid of all of that. Now, my, here's my question for you. Are you on a quest to be more like him? I am on a quest to be more like him. You know why? I want to be more like him for a selfish reason. I want to be more like him because my value goes up and I'm like him. If you are not on a quest to be more like God, then change your, change your, change your thinking today. Start on the quest. Start on the journey. When you wake up every day, you say, look, first of all, I need to be charged. I need to be charged up. And I'm in, a, I'm in pursuit of God. Why? When I'm pursuing God, I'm glorifying Him. When I'm glorifying Him, my value is going up. When my value is going up, my life is benefited, and then the people around me benefit. In fact, the whole world benefits. Somebody say hallelujah. Can you find one more amen underneath your seat? You know what Jesus said? You know what the Bible says? The Bible says glorify God in your body. In other words, do what He says about your body. So sometimes, you know, we have all of these debates. You know, we, we are debating, well, you know, um, God does not understand the times that we're living. You know, he's kind of ancient, and um, he was before our time, and so he instituted rules that were archaic. You know, the young people today are very horny, uh, like they weren't horny before, and therefore, uh, it's not reasonable to say that, uh, you know, you glorify God in your body by abstaining. Isn't that interesting that we come up with a theory? Are we saying God's theory is old, but God was there before the theory began and he is at the end of the theory and he is forever and he don't change. And so if he said something, we need to, to, to figure out how to conform to it rather than tell him to change it. Because unfortunately, God is not a Democrat. He's not a Republican. He was never voted in office and he'll never be voted out of office. In fact, he is the office from which all offices come from. So if he says glorify God in your body, you just find a way to do it. I don't care if you struggle. I don't care if halfway through in the back seat of the car, you got to pull up your pants and start running, run. You see, you may, you may say, boy, I can't do it, but Joseph did it, you know. Joseph did it, and there are a lot of other people who did it. And you know, when I got saved, to be honest with you, uh, I had to do it a couple times, you know. I can be honest with you, I can be real with you all. I, I, you know, I, I could come here today and say, well, you know, I got saved and, uh, and I followed the word to the letter and glory to God. And then you all looking at me and, and, and you struggling. You say, well, boy, Pastor Dave and them, they never had no struggle and something wrong with me. But you see, when I tell you I've been through the same thing, then you understand. You know, I, I remember, I remember those times. I remember, I remember the time when I had the, tell a young lady, I say, I say, you know, I got to go. I got to go. And she said, what's wrong? I said, I got to go. You know why? Because I want to be more like God. And you see, I was not used to saying I got to go. And that's, that was the hard part. But you see, the value of God meant more than the value I was going to receive from that situation. So, and you know, you know, and what was in the background, you know what God was saying in the background? God was saying, boy, run because I got something for you. I got something for you with better than this. And you see, if you keep playing around with these kind of things, you ain't gonna get what I have for you. So run, baby, run. <laughs> touch, the, touch the person next to you, say, sometimes you gotta run. So you gotta glorify God in your body. And you see, I started glorifying God in my body and, and my level started going up. You see, I, you know, at first I had to struggle to run, but later on it was easy to run. And then it got to the point where, you know, I had all kinds of offers 
And I was just able to say no. You know why? Because I started glorifying God in my body. And when I started glorifying God in my body, then it meant my charge got higher and so I could resist better. Some of us, we can't resist because we don't have no power. We don't have no charge on the inside of us. You need, that's why you need to come, to come to church. But outside of church, in your car, you need to play worship music. You know why? You need to worship God because you want to stay charged because you don't want situations to come on you and you don't have no charge. You need the power before the situation arises. Some of us, we fail because we fail to charge ourselves up. The Bible says, build yourself up in the most holy faith. Amen? You want to be consistent with your nature. The Bible tells us to glorify God in our bodies. Be integrated, have character. You see, having character is not an easy thing because we live in an environment that works against us. But we are not concerned about the environment because we are not ordinary citizens. We are actually from another country. And when you're from another country, when you are from the KOG and you live in the 242, it means that the environment of the 242 doesn't run your life even though it affects your life. So the environment affects you, but you overcome the environment because of your source country and the laws and the stipulations of your country. So we are able to overcome things because we tie ourselves to the Word of God. We say, you know what? Um, even though I'm in this environment and I know this environment is tempting and I know it's giving me issues and problems, I am able to overcome because I'm connected to my source. I have a charge on the inside of me. So when it's time for me to function and overcome, I have the ability to do it. Are you with me? Somebody say amen. amen. So my question is, do you want to be more like him? That's the quest that we have. Do you want to be more like him? Now, I want to close with something that I believe is powerful for us today. Now this picture on the screen shows us the light coming through. And one of the interesting things that God said that we should do, and this is how we glorify him, it says, you need to shine. That's the person next to you and say, you need to shine. You see, a lot of us, our light is so dim because we don't have power. And sometimes we think power comes from somebody laying hands on you. Power comes from you praying in the Holy Spirit yourself. Power comes from you worshiping God for yourself. You see, you can't come to the church and ask the preacher to power you up. You have to come to the church powered up and the, church, and the pastor agrees with the power that's in you. That's why, you know, sometimes the church has the concept wrong. You know, in a lot of places I go, I pray for people and I lay hands on people. And sometimes, you know, people say, well, Pastor Dave, you don't lay hands on people all the time. Let me tell you why because I want you to get it. I don't want you to depend upon me because God never said that any pastor or preacher carries the healing properties. It's God who has the healing properties. So each of us needs to, to connect with God. Your faith has to be your personal faith. It can't be the, the, the pastor's faith or your parents' faith or the community's faith. So what does glory mean? Glory means to shine, to radiate to sparkle. When you show up, things should start sparkling around you. When you show up, it should, it should be, things should start lighting up. You should light up the room by your countenance. Here's a question for, I have for you. When you show up, does it sparkle? Does it sparkle when you show up? What happens when you show up? Let me tell you something, it may not sparkle perfectly when I show up, but when I show up, things start to sparkle. I know it because I get the comments. People say that, they say, man, Pastor Dave, you are different. Well, I am different and I know I'm different. And I'm different not because of me. I'm different because I'm connected and I'm charged. And because I'm charged, I'm shining. Somebody say hallelujah. We are born to shine. We are destined to shine. We are supposed to be shining. I don't know if you know this, but, but God is a God of bling. Now, see, God is not the kind of bling that you're thinking about. You know, when you have on your jewelry and everything, you say, boy, I bling it. Let me tell you something. God is an eternal bling. Where he, wherever he goes, he blings. He's a blinging God. And you see, he wants us to bling like him. He don't want us to bling with jewelry. He wants to bling with his essence. 
He wants us to bling by reflecting Him. He wants you to have authentic bling, not fake bling. A lot of people in the world have fake bling. God wants you to have authentic bling. Anybody want to have authentic bling? I want, I want you to look at this scripture. This is Isaiah chapter 60. And you know, when God says things to people, God, the way God says things sometimes, we could think that God is saying something he's not saying. But when God says things, he makes it so clear. And if you dig deep into the word, you'll get a revelation. Here's what he said. He said, arise. What does arise mean? Arise means to get up. He says, arise and shine. So God is saying to you today, he said, man, get up and start shining. He says, arise and shine for your light has come. Now, I want you to know something that the light that he's talking about when he says your light has come is not talking about a light that's within you. Um, I need Davriel and Ethan a second for me. Y'all stand right in front here. A second for me. You see, um, stand and face the crowd. Ethan, you stand in the back of Davriel. You stand in the front. Stand directly in front of him. And you see, um, when it says your light has come, the interesting thing about the relationship between the sun and the moon is that we could start thinking that the moon has light. But the moon is actually a black rock. The moon has never had light in its history. But what happens is that, Davriel, I want you to move five spaces to the left. Okay, so when the moon doesn't get in front of the sun, we call it night. I mean, I mean we, we call it the absence of, 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 of moonlight. But when the moon starts to get more closely associated with the sun, come a little closer, right there, right there. We call it a half moon. You know why? Because the light is only reflecting on a part of it. But when it's fully lined up, you can get fully lined up. When it's fully got lined up, we don't even talk about the sun anymore. We say, man, boy, the moon is bright tonight. Thank you, you may be seated. But you see, what you have to understand is that the moonlight comes when it gets connected to the sun. That's why when it says, arise and shine for your light is come. In other words, get up and get connected to me, stand in front of me, so your light, people can look at you and say, man, boy, your light arrived. It says, and the glory of the Lord is risen on you. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth and deep darkness the people, but the Lord will arise over you. Say, arise over me. You see, God will show up over you and then people will say, man, you full of light. And, and, and they think it's your light, but it's not your light. It's, it's, it's the fact that you are connected to your source. So it says, but the Lord will arise over you and his glory will be seen upon you. The Gentiles shall, shall come to your light and the kings to the brightness of your rising. It's saying that the, the sinners will come to you and it says kings, all kind of people of great authority. You know, when I, when I, when I think uh, uh, of Dr. Monroe, um, he was shining and, and all kind of people started asking for audience. And some people looked at it and they said, boy, he was a smart man, but you know, he was just like all of us. But uh, he, he, got, he got some light. He got around the light. And when you, go, when you get around the light, people will think you're smart. And people will start asking you questions. You know, in the last um, six months to a year, I've just been amazed at the people who have started asking me questions. I mean, people in high authority, people coming to me for advice. Um, you know, I, I put some, some, some columns in the newspaper. I, I started a column called Diplomatic Notes. And the reason I did that is because I discovered who I am. And let me, let me tell you something. I'm an ambassador of the kingdom of God. So as an ambassador of the kingdom of God, I represent the, the kingdom of God in the 242. So I'm supposed to speak to the 242. So I started speaking. And when I started speaking, and I put some of it on Facebook, and I meet people and they say, they say oh, a guy told me yesterday, he said, man, he said, man, where did you get such wisdom from? And I say, man, look here, the wisdom has always been there. It's been in, in God. I just decided to start following what he says and representing him. I decided to start shining. And so people have started calling me. You know, people call me, come, we'd like to hear what you have to say. Why? 
Not because of my words, but because I'm shining. I'm reflecting the glory of God. And when you reflect the glory of God, it says the Gentiles shall come. They, stay, they start looking for your light. They say, man, there's something about you. And that's what we need to do. We need to be a reflection of God. And it says, and the king, kings to the brightness of your rising. Everybody say, it's time to rise. The more we look like him and act like him, the more glorious we become. You start becoming heavy. You got any heavy people in here today? I tell you, I'm ready to be heavy. I'm ready to be heavy. And we're going to wrap up. The more glorious you become, the more we shine and sparkle. We need some shiny people. We need some blinging people, but not blinging because of jewelry. God is a shiny God, so we need to reflect him. The purpose of glory is for it to be revealed in us, and then the people will understand their true worth. The people around you will understand their true value when the glory is revealed in us. If the glory isn't revealed in us, they can never figure out what the true value is. Because if the glory isn't revealed in us, it means that people will have a wrong concept of God. But when the glory is revealed in us, people get it. They start figuring it out. And then they are drawn to the light. And when they are drawn to the light, then their value and their worth increases. That's why he said to go into all the world. If your children act right, you start to receive glory. Let me tell you something. If your children are a good reflection of you, it causes your word to carry more weight in the community. And I'm not down on anybody if you have children who are, who are not the wrong way. I'm just showing you how things line up in the kingdom of God. That's why God told Abraham, he said, man, I chose Abraham because I know Abraham is going is to um, teach his children and his family. See, see God, God wants you to have weight. And you have weight when you reflect him and the people around you reflect him. And it's up to us to start shining. I want us to stand together. You know, our theme scripture for this year, our theme scripture for this year is Matthew chapter 5, verse 14. And I don't know if we included Isaiah chapter 60 in our theme for the year, but if we didn't, I'm going to go back and include it retroactively because he said, arise and shine. And Matthew chapter 5 and verse 14 says, you are the light of the world. Now, can you imagine that? Can you imagine God looking at you and I and saying, you, with your messed up self, you are the light of the world. That doesn't make sense. And you see, because it doesn't make sense to us, we act like we are not light. But you see, he said, you are light. And he said, you don't have to have your own light. All you have to do is line up with me and the people will figure out where your light comes from. So when he says, you are the light of the world, it didn't mean that you brought the light. It means you connected with the light. He says, a city that is set on a hill cannot be hid, nor do they light a lamp and put it under a basket, but on a lampstand. And it gives light to all who are in the house. Then verse 16 says, let your light so shine. So if it says, let your light shine, it means that you can... You cannot let it shine. So he said, man, you have to start letting it shine. He says, let it shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father which was in heaven. So when they see the light in you, then they start to glorify your Father in heaven. The only light people will ever see is the light that comes from you. I want us to close with a song today. And that song is, I want to be more like you. And one of the reasons why I chose that song is because I think we need to be reminded who we're supposed to emulate and what we're supposed to be like. And, and we're going to get ready to receive the offering. And as we are singing, I, ushers, I want you to just come to the front, put the buckets right here. And as we are singing this song together, we're just going to worship God together. And today, what I want you to do, you can, you can go ahead, get your offering. I want you to give something extra to God today. I don't want you to give the regular. You know, sometimes we come to church and we have a designated amount. You say, you know, well, you know, I can give $20. I want you to give according to the value God is to you today. Amen? Are you with me today? I want you to give according to the value that God is to you and the value you receive from Him. You see, um, 
Sometimes we give, and I'm not knocking anybody, because we all do it. Sometimes we give, and we give out our obligation. We say, you know, God, um, I'm going to give you the regular what I give you, because that's what I, that's what I normally do. And you say, well, I give my tithes, and so on. But sometimes we, forgot, we forget what God did for us. If God did something for you, in fact, if he ignited your spirit today to the word, I, I want you to put a value on that and say, you know what, I'm going to invest back into your kingdom because I want to see your kingdom advance. Are you with me today? Is everybody with me today? I want us to bow our heads for a moment. Actually, let me give you a, mo a moment to get your gifts because we're going to close the, 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 the session today with you giving your gifts and then we're going to have the announcements and leave. But I just want you to recognize today that God is our source. He's our sustainer. And when we give into this ministry, we are given back into the source. You're not given to me. I want to be more like you. Ooh.